Hello guys, welcome back. Today's going to be my winter favorites video. Good timing because it's getting so warm. Yesterday was 61 degrees, today is in the 50s. We're gonna talk about everything that I've been loving in the winter time. Also, it accidentally became an updated makeup routine. So these skincare products I've been using the most on my face. Starting off with this vitamin C serum. This is newer to Love Tinted. It's called the Super Bright. It has 50% vitamin C. It's a serum stick. So just like their serum for hyperpigmentation, same packaging. I've been using this ever since it released. You can kind of see it on the skin, but once you blend it out, it just melts. So it is a little bit thicker than the hyperpigmentation one, if you have that one already, if you've tried it. Now, it doesn't have fragrance, but it does smell. And if I'm remembering correctly, it smells just like the hyperpigmentation one, but it's been maybe since December since I finished that product. You guys know because I talk about it non-stop, I've been dealing with a lot of skin problems on my forehead from a lot of stress and everything that has happened in the last six months. We are towards like the very end of it. Six months, almost seven months later, I am almost back to my normal skin. I just have a little bit on the forehead, but it's so minimal compared to what it used to be. And then over that, I've been going in with this. This is the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion for normal to dry skin. This was actually my mom's and we had bottles of this because we always wanted to have extras and to never have an issue with running out. So because she has extras and some of them have been opened and I couldn't donate them, I ended up just keeping them for myself and just using her products and this was one of them. So I use this specifically on my face but i know you can use it for your body as well that's what she did but i just love how lightweight it feels and how easy it is to just put on your face i've been dealing with some patchiness on my skin specifically my neck some redness i think it's because of the weather change it's been quite warm in new york yesterday it was like 61 today it's 51 i can't believe it was snowing what like not even two weeks ago and then over that i would sometimes add a face oil this one's from gizu it's their honey infused face oil. I'm already halfway done, but I've had that for quite a while since I really just use it end of fall, all of winter. And this body cream was in my yearly favorites. It's from Fenty Beauty. This is the Butter Drop Whipped Oil Body Cream. I am at the very end. I think I'll be done with this, you know, the next couple of weeks. It's so good. It's thick. It does have that oil feel to it as you rub it in. It just feels so luxurious. And what I like to do is I'll put this on my feet and then I'll put fuzzy socks over them and it just feels so nice. I'm not too picky with my body creams, so most I enjoy unless it's the fragrance that I don't like. I get excited when I get out of the shower or the bath and I put this one on. I only have one hair product that stood out to me. This was sent to me. Uh, the brand is called Matrix Food for Soft. It's a multi-use hair oil serum. I used it today on my natural wavy hair texture. Uh, today, I ended up um, drying my hair just to speed it up a bit. In one of my hair videos, it was a short. I ended up using this as well, and I air dried my hair. It's just so nice, and I enjoy the smell. It's definitely on the warmer side. It has vanilla in it. I'm not familiar with this brand, but I know you can get it at Ulta. Okay, moving on to the makeup, let's start with these. These are from e.l.f. Cosmetics. It's the Squeeze Me Lip Balms. So I got this one for free. Um, a while ago and I didn't like it mainly because of the flavor it's vanilla frosting so I tried again since I'm coming out with an elf cosmetics we are ranking all of their lip products so I was like you know what let me try it out again and this one's in peach so much better it doesn't give a tint so if you're expecting that you're not going to see that at least not with these two that I have it feels really nice on the lips this is on the smaller side I was expecting it to be the size of the summer Fridays one this one only has 0.21 ounces for primer has to go to another elf cosmetics product this is the power grip with the 4% niacinamide so it's the one that is pink I've been using this non-stop halfway done when did I get this was it in January or end of December and it just works so well with all of my products it doesn't pill and it's great if you are dealing with breakouts one of my subscribers asked for an updated makeup routine this is kind of it especially these two products the tower 28 serum concealer and this product and now that i'm thinking about it i believe this is a product that came out this year from elf cosmetics so this technically should have been included in my last video and i'm so sorry that it wasn't in there 
I just somehow blinked. I don't know how. I was looking on the app to make sure I included everything, but I don't remember this one popping up. This is the Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener. This was so surprising. I don't really go for concealers in a pot like this. And I was expecting it to be really dry because their other pot products in this exact same packaging are really dry and they're cracked and they're just not good. You can't even use them. I kept them just to have them, but I don't use them at all. This is so nice and emollient. I believe this one is light medium. So when I'm going for a very like no makeup makeup kind of look, this is what I go for. It looks amazing under the eyes. And sometimes if I want essentially like a no makeup look, but I'm having just a little something, it's this. You don't even notice it like where it starts. So if I wasn't wearing any other their complexion product but I just wanted to cover up some of the darkness even though my darkness is quite minimal and just brighten under the eyes look at that difference and it just somehow melts into the skin and it's so light and thin you just can't see where it starts or where it ends I love this concealer and I didn't think I was going to like this I am so impressed and also surprised how much I enjoy this I travel with this when I go for very minimal makeup looks, this is what I'm using under my eyes. Now, would I use it for breakouts? Eh, I think I want a little more coverage. So that's why I would go in with something like this. Although this came out last year, I really didn't use it too much last year. I used my Ilia way more, and that's why that one was in my yearly favorites and this one wasn't. So then I was like, in the new year, I need to bring this out and wear it more often. And then I realized, wow, this is a really great concealer. So this is what I would use for hyperpigmentation, breakouts, I've been using this all over the forehead, around the nose. And then I just go in with a sponge. I actually like to wait for the concealer to get tacky, so I won't immediately start blending it in. Also, this shade match is really good. I'll have my shade down below like I usually do. My skin looks so good. So this is what I like to go for for like a no makeup makeup day or when I go to agility class. This is kind of the base that I would go for. But if I want a little more coverage, and I wanted to mention these, even though technically neither of these shades are the perfect shade for me, at least right now, I have 23W Bisque and 27W Peach Tan. Peach Tan is just a little too dark for me. So if you are darker than me, I think this will be a better match for you. And then 23W is way too light for me and it doesn't have enough warmth. So I like to combine the two. I feel like you wouldn't do that for a cushion compact, like that defeats the purpose but I do love the packaging and how you can just press this button to get more product to come out. I love that, but I just wanted to mention these. I still do like them. Let's get into the brushes since I have quite a few. I always have multiples. Starting off with this M Cosmetics one. This is the Pillow Blush in Peanut. This is a muted peach. They also have one other shade. At first, I didn't care for this. I thought it was just like, okay. But lately, I've been wearing it on my no makeup makeup days. So this with this combo with the concealer, perfect. Still don't love the packaging. I wish you could fit the little cushion inside, this tiny one, because I do enjoy using it. Now, I did want to let you guys know I have been enjoying this and using this quite a bit, and I noticed a lot of you guys have bought that product from that video. Muted Peach, that's not too bright or vibrant. I would go for this one. The Camel Liquid Blushes from Elf, the best drugstore ones. I love the variety of colors. I just talked about this in my recent video. I've been wearing these non-stop. I'm not going to wear them today since I've shown you guys these blushes quite a bit already. These are really pretty, not too dewy. I think they last a pretty long time. I rediscovered the Milani Baked Powder Blush. This one is in Dulce Pink. So pretty. It is luminous. You definitely do not need a highlighter. So when I'm going for something quick, I love using something like this. Great longevity as well since it is a powder. But you just can't beat the Milani Baked Blushes. And the one I'll be wearing today is from N Cosmetics. This is the Heaven's Glow Blush in Baroque. So pretty. The perfect neutral blush if you're around my skin tone and a little bit lighter. I think if you're medium, it's not going to show up for you. Before we apply that, let's set the skin. This one, another M Cosmetics product. That video, that was a great video. I found so many new discoveries. This is their new Portrait Mode Refining Setting Powder in Sheer. So it is translucent. The packaging so pretty, not too thick. This has become my new traveling powder. It used to be the Charlotte Tilbury one, but there were things about it that I didn't like. They can fit a little cushion in it. 
and that it also had a tint to it because that tint, although I made it work, it was like a touch too dark for me. Where this, it's sheer, you don't have to worry about that. It comes with its own little applicator and then it also has a mirror. So to me, this is the perfect traveling powder. I like using something like this a little bit more, really just because of the shape. Let me just show you guys a side by side if you missed that video. I barely had any powder, just look. Now, because this is a very lightweight thin powder, I do have to powder my skin again. Like this is not a heavy duty powder, but I love it for touch-ups and for really like no makeup makeup days. I want to go through this powder so quickly. By the end of this month, I will have definitely hit pan. I'm surprised I haven't already. That's how much I use it. Just gonna set breakout areas. Come on, this looks beautiful. I love a good powder. Going back to that M Cosmetics blush. Neutral blushes are really hard to find. I'm working on one. I'd like to do a drugstore version, but I don't know if I'll be able to find enough to make a whole video. I might just have to combine with just neutral blushes in general. This is such a beautiful neutral blush. I wish I ordered this sooner. That's how much I love to wear this. And that glow, so pretty. I still feel like my voice isn't 100% yet. I don't know if you guys know, but I got COVID almost two weeks ago. And I still am not like 100% because my voice still feels slightly off. But it was my first time getting COVID. I thought I was immune, mainly because I was at a hospital a lot last year, at an assisted living, feeding my mom. I thought I was immune. I'm surprised I didn't get it from her or from one of the residents or just any of the patients at the hospital, but I got it from Anthony because of the Super Bowl. At least I think so. Positions for the Butter Glow Bronzer and Blush. This is a peach right here but it is so pretty. Since I didn't apply any cream bronzer, we're gonna use this more like a bronzer. I just love the way it makes my skin look. So their powder products are just so good. This is another product where if I need to go fast, this two for one is perfect. I'm excited to continue wearing this when it gets warmer. Man, I look like I got like a glow from within. Maybe I was outside for a little bit. So although this is a winter favorites, these are all the products that I discovered in January and February, at least some of these later half ones. These two brow products. Starting off with this one, this came out earlier this year. This is the Maybelline Build-A-Brow. So this is a pen and a clear gel. Maybe over a year ago, I was going to come out with a video because I love brow pens and it was going to be talking about like the best versus worst. I ended up ditching that video because I couldn't find a best brow pen. That was drugstore. Did I mention that drugstore? Couldn't find one. So I was like, well, I can't make a video if they all suck. But this one, when this one came into my life, I was like, ooh, this is different. This is different because of the brush. It's more of your traditional brush. It doesn't have like, you know how some of those uh, brow pens had the little teeth? Yeah, that's not this. I don't really like that. I don't think it does a great job. This has the perfect amount of pigment where it's not too pigmented, where your brows look really dark and heavy. I have the shade Ash Brown. I do want to try a different shade just to kind of compare the two. But what I like to do is... Go in with the gel and also the combination of the two, a clear gel and a pen. Personally, I haven't seen that yet. It's a very small brush. You know me, I like my small brushes. So there's not a lot of product on the brush. So I end up having to go through it a couple of times, but you don't get any kind of white residue like at all. And I'm putting this on after I have set my skin. Sometimes it will affect if you like the powder on your skin. I go in a couple of times and then once it gets a little tacky, I just go in one last time. I think if you have really stubborn eyebrow hairs, this is not going to be a strong of a hold. I have other clear brow dryers where you only have to swipe once and then you're good. That's just not the case with this one. For whatever reason, my brow hairs are quite fine, but then the hair on my head is quite coarse. I just find that so interesting. You'd think it would be the same. This might be a dupe for my favorite brow pen. I'm working on a dupe video, but it's taking me a while because I need to have enough dupes, and right now I only have three. I would ideally like to have at least five. This might be one of them. See how it's not too dark, but the pen is thin enough to create hair-like strokes. So good. This is one of my favorite finds, and I I haven't had a chance to share it with you guys because I didn't want to just do a video of it on its own so I didn't have a place to go. I went a little heavy-handed right here at the front. I'm gonna blend that out. You could really just leave it like this. I would be honestly perfectly fine with just this but I want to show you guys this. This is the Jason Wu Thick and Fluffy Brow Gel in Taupe. I love 
the color of this. Not warm, more of a neutral. It has these fibers, so it makes your brows thicker. This does not have hold, which is why I always have to pair this with something. I actually like pairing this with the Unleash Your Brow Gel, the Refi one, something like that. They pair nicely together. Just a little bit of tint, not too much. That's the other thing. Sometimes these tinted brow gels, which is why I don't really like to wear them, they give too much, where then my brows look really blocky and it's hard to undo it. But that's not the case with this one. The Unleashia Pretty Easy Glitter Sticks. I swatched all the shades that I have, so I definitely check out that video if you want to see all of these. But the one that I wore the most is in Sheer Skin. Because it truly looks like sheer skin and it doesn't have the glitter chunks in them, at least not this one, which is why I wear it the most. But I like to use it as a highlighter, whether it's for the brows and then I just blend and it really just stays put and if i want to highlight the nose a little bit i need to be the perfect size if you like to highlight the lip it's subtle but that's why i like it now that i think about it i don't have any true eyeshadow products to share with you guys like nothing really stood out to me these last few months but what i have been doing is wearing my blush as my eyeshadow especially this color so let's go back to the blush that i'm wearing i just like to put a wash on the eyelids don't mind my eyes they're like slightly darker than my skin i've been using this oil like a cleansing oil and i don't think my skin likes it specifically my eyes it's just been a little dark you know how people complain with the um what is it called the lash serum where it irritates their eyes i'm getting that effect with this cleansing oil so i'm gonna have to stop using that cleansing oil see how pretty just like a wash of color and then what i do is i just blend it to the cheeks since i brought my blush up to my temples you guys know the drugstore eye pencils that i love i'm obsessed with but lately i've been wanting to try out something new just different seeing what else is out there so i discovered this one it's from revlon i believe it's one of their newer products it's the color stay multi player this is so pretty it's a deep brown you guys know i love that but what's interesting is that it has a brush on the other side i wish it was angled if i'm being nitpicky but i've been loving using this brush because anytime i go for a pencil eyeliner and i'm going for a wing I love using something like this and to have it all in one just makes it really easy. So I just sharpened this for the first time. It doesn't get too sharp, but I'm barely touching the skin. Look how much pigment I get. And also with the brush and the way I could just use that little bit and bring it all the way to my inner corner and then i just do a small wing these mascaras i've been wearing non-stop let's start off with this mascara primer this one is from etude it's the dr mascara fixer i thought especially when it says fixer i thought it meant i think it was mac that came out with this product last year where they had this product it's like a a conditioner? I don't know what it was, but it would fix your lashes midday. So you could reapply more. I really didn't understand the point of that product, but I thought this was that because it's called fixer, but it's not. And also, who's going to reapply their mascara in the middle of the day when they're working? To me, it just didn't seem very realistic. But this is a mascara primer. I love this because it does a great job with some of my mascaras that can hold a curl, but also I like it because it is not white. This has replaced my Lancome one and the dupe one, the Essence one. You almost can't even tell I'm wearing it. See that curl? This works so well with all my mascaras versus my other mascara primers and when they're white not all of the mascara formulas can fully cover the white so then you can see it a little bit so this mascara the brand is called agg i found it on amazon it has the tiniest brush i've ever seen super tiny very thin perfect for mono lids or if you like to add mascara to your lower lashes this is in black i think it's the only shade that they have it has a little mirror on the side but if you want length and curl you go for this one and i find this to be easier to remove than the clear ones now that tubing mascara from elf i also really enjoy but it's a totally different look from this this is not going to give you curl it's going to be more voluminous and it's going to give a lifting effect you guys can see a dedicated video on this product and also a wear test i wear this kind of mascara for a different look i'm going to tell you this now because you're a real one if you're watching this video i'm planning a video on all the drugstore tubing mascaras i didn't think there was that many to actually make one but i think there's about four and you guys know i love my even numbers so i could do one in each eye so definitely look out for that it'll probably be 
maybe like middle of March, I want to try all the mascaras individually, compare the two, so it just takes me a little more time. But look out for that one. For lip liners, we have Drugstore again. Starting off with the pencil ones, these are the e.l.f. Cream Glide Lip Liner. These are very pigmented. They have a decent amount of neutral shades. I bash beige and truth are bare. I wear these quite often. They're also really easy to sharpen. You get a nice sharp point. You can't go wrong with $2 lip liners. And then my other one, which is more of a lip stain. This is the CoverGirl Outlast Lip Stain. So this came out from what everyone is saying a long time ago. I didn't get them when they initially came out. This is their new packaging. I like to use this as a lip liner, just like those ones that I discovered last summer. Same effect. This was the only shade that I felt like was more of a neutral shade all the rest are quite vibrant so if you're looking for that you might like the other colors this is the only shade that interested me this is 10 sugar girl let me take off that lip balm first that's another thing these won't really show up as much you don't do that first but they're quite pigmented that's what i was surprised so this is how i like to wear them more like a lip liner i do have to store this facing down because not as pigmented as it was last month so if you're getting these make sure you store them this way for something like this i like to to pair it with a lip oil or a lip balm. So I go in with something like the e.l.f. Glow Revival Lip Oil. These are quite sheer. And I think all of them are sheer because I own, I think, three of them. You really only need one. This one is in Honey Talks. And then another lip oil that I love, which is more pigmented and more fragrant. So I think this is more minty, where this is quite strong. So this one is Honey Fig, and it literally smells like honey fig but what i like about this one a little bit more than the elf one is this one stays on the lips just longer so if you want something more pigmented and you want it to last longer on the lips i would go for the milani ones i'm trying to think what i'm going to go for today maybe honey fig some other lip products that i've been enjoying this one was more towards the end of last year the unleashia hug velvet tint these are so pretty make your lips look so good and smooth. They just need to come out with more neutral shades because I would wear Unleashia way more if they came out with more neutral shades. It's like they're part of the Lip Smacker family. This one is in number three. And then my other ones, although I do own all three, this is the Physician's Formula Butter Tinted Lip Conditioner. I think the other one's in my bag. If you want to see what all the shades look like, I would definitely go to that video. But I've been loving these as well. They have a good amount of color to them. And they're glossy, but they're not super glossy. This is basically my makeup routine. Something super simple, glowy, powdered in the right areas, glossy on the lips, but still very simple. I hope you guys enjoyed my favorites video slash updated makeup routine. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more fashion and beauty content. Emphasis on the fashion part because I bought a few things that I'm excited to show you for like my bachelorette trip, like what I'm going to be wearing for that. Um, kind of loungewear things that are quite feminine and girly. I don't know. Things like that. Get excited. I'm excited for the warmer weather and I will catch you guys in another video. Bye!